Hi all, I'm Jeanette Kays from Jewelry Art Sync. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to solder a bezel down into a ring shank that's been cut open so that we get a beautiful seam on both sides and not a lot of cleanup. So, we're getting ready to solder. We have this lovely, this is all 18 karat, right? 18 karat ring, um, we filed it to fit down in, you know, right over the bezel. And what we're talking about is like, this is, soldering it is actually not that big of a deal. It's uh, getting the little shit to sit there nice and level and fit. And we were saying like in a perfect world, it would fit perfectly, but in the real world, it fits, it has to be tight enough that it can't just slide. That is extremely important. If it can just move around in there, you've got to squeeze it a little bit tighter. Um, another really key element to doing soldering like this is to put it over at an angle because it, when you set up for something like this, if the bezel is straight up or straight down, sometimes, not every time, but sometimes when you're heating it, it'll just slide down like the flux gets all hot and liquidy and it just like, which is not good. So that's usually why I do it over at an angle like this. I'm going to put, so I put a little flux on both sides like so and like so. Uh, to hopefully keep them clean, but I'm gonna work one side at a time and one piece at a time. Like I'm gonna add one piece, I'm gonna flow it. If that fills it, yay. If not, I'll put another piece, but you can't do like really a lot, whole lot here at once because you just don't have that much real estate to place the solder. Um, a lot of times also I, I find it preferable with stuff like this that's like fussy to just do one piece of solder, get it tacked so that it can't move around. And then you, the rest of it is easier to do, okay? So I'm gonna dry the flux. I'm gonna dip this in a little bit of flux. I'm gonna sit it right there. And then the next important thing, which I will demonstrate with the torch, of course, but we're gonna heat right where my tweezers are. Basically, I'm drawing the heat where I want it to go, which is to flow down in between the bezel and the shank. So I'm gonna heat from right down here. Now, you will be tempted at times to solder from the top. Like, let's say we, we put this in here and there's a little more space, you're like, I'm just gonna put a piece on the top. That's the devil talking. Don't add it from the top. Always add it from underneath. Underneath is super easy to clean. When you add from the top, like you can do it, but then to clean it up and have it look nice is really difficult. So I pretty much, unless I am truly desperate and I like to think I'll never get that desperate, uh, don't add it from the top. Add it from the inside, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna dry it a little bit, like so. And the reason that I put flux on both sides, even though I'm only gonna work on one side, is if I'm lucky and this side stays clean enough, I won't have to stop and pickle in between. I can just flip it over and do the other one. If it doesn't stay clean enough, fine, I'll stop and pickle. But in my, in my perfect world, I don't have to do that in between. I can just do the one side and then go to the other. So we're using 14 karat solder since everything here is 18 and we've already used 18 a couple times. So you see that? Now I'm going to heat that up a little bit. It may wiggle around. So I've got my tweezers there, but basically that's right where my solder is going to go, where it's touching the bezel and the shank. I'm going to heat from underneath here so it'll just get drawn right in there. And I'm using a zero tip. That should be plenty big enough for this. 14 karat solder doesn't require really an extreme amount of heat. That's why you always have your tweezers there. Me too. Oh, here. See that? And that's why you add it from underneath, because you see a little bit of it went on the bezel. Well, that's not a big deal to clean up. If that happens on the top, it's like, eh. Okay? And what that means, where it first wanted to melt there, means that bezel got a little bit hotter than the shank, which means I was not heating them as evenly as I could have dreamed. <laughs> but if you take a look, it's really not too shabby looking there. Go you see what I mean? So basically what I do then is I flip it and I look from the top and the side. Now, if you look at that, that looks really good. And I don't think that requires any more solder. Can you see that, Alexis? Yep, here, let me get it. You see what I mean? Look how good that looks from the top and the side. That's, that's some good shit right there, you know? And that's why this method and none other that I have ever tried works so well because there's a lot of things where i'll say well you could do it this way you could do it that way this is like do it like this i'm telling you it works amazing so i'm this other side looks clean enough so i'm just going to flip it around and do the other side too so 
So now it's not going to slip. So that's well, it shouldn't. I'm still going to put it at a bit of an angle, but it shouldn't really go anywhere now. The key a lot of times with tricky soldering is that people are always trying to get the whole thing in one shot. And it's like, forget that bullshit. Get one little piece to flow so that it will wiggle around on you. And then you can add the rest and it's really no big deal. It's that first piece that's the fussiest. So that's the way I'm usually looking at it. Let's get it locked in place and then I can add, Do you, you ever know. flux the top? Well, when I put it right here, it flows around. And if, if for any reason I think there isn't flux there, because yes, you definitely want flux where you want the solder to go. But normally if I place it there like that, it's going to run all the way around. And you will also notice I'm using uh, the soldering tweezers and not the point soldering tool, um, because I want to be able to poke it or pick it up as I desire, rather than just poke it. Okay, so you see what I mean? The same spot. The solder is approximately the same size. But I did the tightest side first. I mean, they look pretty good, but one of them was a little tighter than the other, and I'm sure I've talked about this in lots of videos. Always do the best spot first. You know what I mean? And then you can add and add and do whatever you need to do. That's why I did this one second. I mean, it's it's perfectly tight. It'll work fine, but I'm just saying. Of the two. Oh, yeah, there you go. Now you're talking. It is so satisfying. Now, Alexis, if you can get a shot of that. That is some clean and beautiful soldering, if I do say so myself, and I do. But we'll put it in the pickle and take a picture so that you can see it, you know, more cleanly. But that's the shit right there, and that's what we want. And that's why this is so technique dependent, you know what I mean? And no other way I've ever done this does, do I get a nice result like this, okay? So we'll put it in the pickle, we'll do a close up, and then I mean, we'll of course double check if we need to add more, but I don't think so. It looked to me like it was all filled in and ready to go. Okay, okay so there it is out of the pickle. It's looking all clean and beautiful. So all we'll need to do is spiff it up a little bit. You dick! I'm leaving that in the video, you dick! Asshole. <laughs> oh, I'm leaving it. I'm leaving it in. So people know what it's really like in the studio. That's right. So here's the ring, all beautiful. Let's see how the solder flowed, lovely. So basically just a little spiff with a little green paper and uh, we're ready to set.